Hello, so this is going to be a video where I actually explain why I really hate communism as an ideology. Now, I'm sure this is going to piss a lot of people off and I'm not going to apologise for it because um, for some reason a lot of my subscribers seem to think communism was great when it really wasn't. Now, if you've read enough about history you already know why communism is awful, but what I'm going to do in this video is simply give you my personal reasons for disliking it as an ideology. And I'll start off by saying I don't hate socialism at all, I think a lot of socialist ideas are very good. But you see, communism is when you kind of take socialism to the extreme and then it horribly breaks. Now, to give you some idea of where I stand politically, I'm fairly libertarian. That's in where I don't think the government should have many rights compared to a citizen. So basically, old-fashioned American kind of sort of politics. Now, I don't go fully sort of ANCAP with that because I think with pretty much any political ideology, the more extreme you go, the more stupid it gets. Because when you get to ANCAP and you are literally debating whether or not people could own muck nukes, that's when, you know, you're, you're at a sort of stupid, um, sort of slant of the ideology if you sort of take it like that. So, you know, just as a sort of, um, if you went to extreme capitalism it wouldn't work, going to extreme socialism wouldn't work. Now, I'm not really in this video going to talk all about why I don't like Karl Marx. I mean, Marx himself was a horrible person, just look up the history of his life and what he did. Um, you know, <laughs> to uh, see why I don't like Marx, but the important thing to understand is Marx did not understand how economics works. Now, so, generally we've come up with a pretty good system for how, you know, economics works, and that's supply and demand. So, the more supply there is of something and the less demand, the price isn't very high. Um, the more demand there is for something and the less supply, uh, the higher the price goes up, and then, you know, you get generally a good mix where there's a decent amount of supply and a decent amount of demand, and that's when price sort of stabilises. Marx, however, considered that basically an item was worth what somebody, had, the amount of effort they put into it. So rather than what somebody's willing to pay for an item, it was the sort of effort that went into it. So let's say you have two people making a chair. You've got one carpenter and like one carpenter and then another carpenter. Uh, carp carpenter. There we go. Um, the carpenter that um, basically takes longer to make that chair even if it's not of a higher quality, um, that chair is worth more money, simply put in Marxist economics. So basically, if you have one, um, you know, carpenter that's not actually very efficient, his product is actually worth more, which doesn't really work in reality. Because one of the things Marx really didn't understand is that, because he moaned all the time about, you know, like factory owners and everything, um, making so much more money than the people that work there, but those are the people who had obviously invested in the business and built everything up. When you work for a company, very it's very unlikely that you've actually, you know, paid loads of money into the company, um, you know, invested in it. So, Marx didn't seem to understand that, obviously, if you had a factory owner that um, had, you know, paid loads more money for more efficient machines and everything else, so they could churn out products faster, even if they were the same or better quality than somebody else, that, therefore, you know, that would actually sometimes even drive down the price of their own products, you know that's just supply and demand. You know, a company that invests more in its infrastructure and can pump out more products is probably going to do better than a company that's, you know, stuck using um, old-fashioned labour methods. So, now let's go beyond Marx himself, and as I said, I'm not going to go into all the horrible things he did as a person, you can read up on those if you want to, um, but I just want to sort of give you a basis that Marx himself didn't understand economics very well. And lots of socialists now who actually, you know, are into Marxist stuff, they actually say Marx got it wrong on economics, even if they agree with some of his other policies. Now, another thing I want to point out before moving on to the next bit of the video where we look at historical communist regimes, is that, um, you know, there was socialism before Marx. This is another sort of fallacy, sort of people who are really into communism seem to think that uh, nobody ever thought of, you know, being nice to other people or... Um, redistribution of wealth or anything like that prior to Marx, which is just totally false. There was lots of socialism before Marx, it's just Marx has now got his name sort of famously on it. So now let's talk about some of the historical communist regimes. So the most famous of all of them was probably obviously the Soviet Union, or Soviet Union. And um, this was obviously the USSR, or CCCP, um, the, um, you know, collection of socialist republics, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, Russia, uh, Russia and a few other countries next to Russia, when um, Lenin took over and the Bolsheviks, and then obviously most famously Stalin, uh, one of the most evil men in history. 
Um, but the point we have to understand is that, yes, I will take the argument that a lot of, um, I suppose, communists will present, that after Stalin died, under Khrushchev and a lot of the others, the Soviet Union certainly wasn't as bad as it had been. I will accept that. Um, but under Stalin, it was a very, very horrible place. Now, I don't know if the numbers as high as 50 to 60 million killed under Stalin are actually correct, but you're certainly looking at dozens of millions of people dead. Now, what we will see time and time again generally of communist regimes is genocide or accidental killing of most of your population. Now, the thing is, is with Nazism, or National Socialism, um, you generally get the people say, you know, that's a horrible ideology, it should never be tried again. Um, now, when it comes to communism for some reason, no matter how many examples we have of communist countries murdering all their citizens, um, you know, people say, oh no, no, but it just didn't work, it wasn't true communism, we'll try it again and it won't happen again. It, it'll, be a, it'll be a lovely utopia this time and it, you know, nothing bad will happen. Which, obviously, if, if you can look at historical examples, you know is not going to be the case. If you try something over and over again and you're getting the same results, you know, <laughs> not a good idea to keep trying it. So, Stalin um, was responsible for several sort of purges, big scale purges and genocides. Um, mostly against Ukraine was probably the worst of the genocides of Holodomor, um, where the Ukrainians were starved by Stalin. Um, basically, they forcefully took the Ukrainians' grain um, to feed the Russians, and actually a lot of it was sold, funnily enough, to capitalist countries. Um, you know, so kill a load of your own people by taking their food, but sell it to other countries for a profit. Hmm. Um, but that was one of the uh, main things. Now, it's debatable whether or not that was actually sort of um, a genocide specifically targeted against Ukrainians because of a hatred for Ukrainians, or whether or not that was just the unlucky people that were, you know, the victim of it. But regardless, many of them were murdered by a communist regime. So, obviously, as I said, Stalin, there was obviously all the terrors under Stalin as well of, you know, people from different groups that were then selected to be killed because, oh, they must be working against me because Stalin was paranoid. Um, so, as I said, it, the Soviet Union was certainly better under Khrushchev, probably not a nice place to live, but I will admit the points that, you know, one of the good things about some of the communist regimes is that pretty much everybody had a job and there was low crime rates in regard to at least sort of petty street crime kind of things because everybody was so scared of the state. So, and yeah, one of the points I will certainly give, give is that, you know, the prefab massive housing block kind of buildings at least gave people um, places to live, which is one of the problems we see in a lot of um, Western countries now where housing is just becoming horribly unaffordable because not enough of it is being built and everything else. So I'll give them that. Um, then obviously we have Communist China with um, Chairman Mao, um, probably responsible for just as many deaths, if not more than Stalin, um, with, you know, the Red Guard and everybody else. Um, doing all the purges for him and massive starvation. You see, with communism you have, have two ways that people are killed. They're either killed deliberately by the state or they're killed accidentally by the state. And I don't know why either of those would make this a good system of government. But with deliberate killing by the state, what you have is obviously when the state decides it's going to kill people for the sake of killing people because it wants them out of the way or whatever else. Accidental killing is where the government policy is so stupid that people die because of a result of that. So, with Mao you had a lot of the mass starvations where um, people were moved, you know, to do different things that they weren't trained to do, like peasants being told to basically make steel and things like that. Um, you know, not enough farming was being done anymore. There's lots and lots of reasons why, um, you know, the starvation happened in China. One of them was that Mao basically ordered all of the birds killed because they were eating the grain. Um, but they were actually eating the insects that ate the crop, so then when you killed the birds, the insect population exploded, ate all the crops, people starved. Hmm. So, again, we've got both Stalin and Mao that are probably adding up to over 100 million people killed at this point, if you're going on their high number of estimates. So that's more than the amount of people killed in the entirety of World War II, including the Holocaust killed by two communist regimes. This, this isn't good numbers already, is it? Um, but then you've got Pol Pot in Cambodia, who also managed to kill something like a third of his country off um, because he decided to start from the year zero and to kill every intellectual in the country because they were obviously the people holding the country back. Oh dear. Um, and there were countless other communist regimes of horrible human rights abuses. Um, Ceausescu in um, Romania, um, you know, probably Castro in 
Cuba as well. Now, I will give, you know, as then, I will, where credit is due, I will say that some of these countries had horrible regimes to begin with, so they went from one ideology to communism, and maybe the communism was just as bad, you know, even if it wasn't worse, it was just as bad as what came before it. Um, but, you know, <laughs> replacing something that's bad with something else that's bad isn't really a good thing, especially when it kills so many people. But the main point I want to get across in this video is I can't understand the mentality of people who look at a system of government that has systematically committed human rights abuses in the 20th century probably killed more people than everything else put together um, and then they say yeah let's try that again no 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 you're stupid or you're a heartless person because you don't want to try communism well it was tried a lot of times and it went horribly every time I know some of the regimes weren't as bad as the others and, you know, I'm not going to do the whataboutism type thing that communists do by saying, oh, but another type of regime like fascism also killed a lot of people. Because, you know, none of these things are good. That's why I said that's why I end up being quite, you know, libertarian. I don't like the idea of a big system of government. The way I look at it, if you've got a jackboot stamping on your head, it doesn't really matter what kind of party of, you know, party armbands on the person who's stamping on your head or if you're put against the wall ready to be shot, you know, what does it matter if they're communists, Nazis, fascists, whatever, you're getting shot at the end of the day. Um, so, there you go. These are my thoughts on why I really don't like communism as an ideology, and why it's a stupid idea to keep trying something that's killed so many people. As I said, if you're a person who can, you know, understand things reasonably, and listen to arguments in good faith, just read up on the history of communism. It's not a big conspiracy against communism. And I said I'm not opposed to socialism in the slightest, as long as it's done in sensible ways. What I'm opposed to is basically a dictatorship um, that tries to force this sort of thing on people. Because as much as people say, oh, it's not true communism, well, why is it that every time people try communism it always ends horribly? So I said I don't normally like doing political videos, but... I think this is a necessary one to do because I don't like to keep trying to justify myself when I make some sort of nasty remark about communism and then I get lots and lots of upset Marxists in the comments telling me why I'm a really evil capitalist apparently because I, you know, have a problem with a system that killed over 100 million people in a sort of 70 year period or something like that. So there we go. As said, I do know that some communist regimes are not as bad as others and obviously the death counts from all of them are debatable. Whether or not it was a real communism is obviously debatable as well, but at the end of the day, the people calling themselves communists managed to murder so many people, um, you know, impoverish actually a lot of people as well. But, um, you know, let's never try it again. Thank you.